Dude, for sure, man. I'm happy to help. It's a shit I live for. Uh, great, great channel, man. Great content. Super helpful. Like, I can't, not just for this call, but I can't thank you enough just for what you're doing. It's a great idea, man. Appreciate it. Oh, man, for sure. What's been your favorite part about the channel so far? Like, uh, It's not teaching me B-roll. <laughs> so... What I'm trying to do, like basic, okay, here's my story in a nutshell. Um, I live on Vancouver Island. Cool. Uh, with my wife, we've got three kids that live at home and a fourth that doesn't live here. And I'd say in about six to seven months, our plan is to move to Vancouver. Okay. So um, big market, right? And I've been in photography for years and I've, made the switch to video I'd say over the last six, eight months. I've always played with video. Uh, so I'm comfortable with the basics, but the last little while I really started getting into like, I want to do corporate style interviews uh, with more big ticket items. You know what I mean? Not like restaurants, things like that. Yeah. Unless I guess there's some major restaurant, but dentists and lawyers, I'm sure roofers and mm. you know what I mean? People that can afford video, want video and need video. Yeah. It's something where I don't have to worry about artistic merit and color grading. And I want to get in, I want to get out. I want to deliver a nice looking product that actually helps a company be successful. And they're like, shit, like let's hire that guy again. Yeah. Work. So that's my goal. And I was hoping uh, you'd have advice for say my best steps so that when I get to Vancouver in six, eight, six to eight months from now, just hit the ground running. Right now I live in a town of about 3000 people. Oh wow. And I'm just next to a town that's about 15, 20,000 people. Okay. And the big joke is that that's where businesses go to die. <laughs> and you're in town, town or the next town? Uh, both. Okay. It's we're, we're a valley. So there's three towns in the valley. Uh -huh. I'm the smallest town in the valley of three towns or whatever. Okay. And it's a retirement community. It's a long story how I got here, but I'm here. Okay. Hi. Hey. And so uh, things like, sorry, man, I'm just flustered. I can't believe I'm talking to you right now. Huge fan, by the I way. Appreciate it, man. Dude, you're dope. I appreciate that. Uh, so, yeah, as for camera, I mean, A7 III, I've got the Sigma 24 to 70 2.8. Great lens. I just sold my photography lighting to buy video lighting. Cool. I wanted to pick your brain kind of on, I know the LED lights you recommend and stuff. Have you seen that new, uh, any of the flapjack lighting? Those round key flat saw like, sorry, I'm in my daughter's room, but okay. as an example, it's just like her mirror. It's just like this uh -huh. LEDs point inwards and it reflects a softer light out cause it's got diffusion on it. Uh -huh. But the footprint is like your square LEDs. Okay. You get a bigger, softer light. I like that. What are they so called? I was thinking of grabbing a couple of those. What are they called? Uh, so they, um, who makes them? The one I'm going to get is Neewer because it's bigger, cheaper. Just type in Neewer Flapjack. Okay. Uh, but the one that it came from is, what is it? Photodiox. All right. I'll check that out. But either way, uh, so I still need to get video lighting. I do have, I set this up in my daughter's room. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. Chinese lantern for light. Nice. I've got a little pocket RGB battery powered. You know what I mean? 120 bucks, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Pretty bright. But that's all I have for video light right now. I do have reflectors and all that stuff. I know light is huge. It is, man, but it's not. Lighting is huge, but not to the point that like you need to break the bank on. So like, right now, my go-to lighting setup is my bovi tech two panels on freaking uh v mount batteries and like for running gun stuff like those things like the only thing i probably would buy is either i'll do this i'll buy two of the bovi tech lights that are daylight balance and then i'll buy one that is, that has bicolors because I, I bought two bicolor ones and they're not as strong but if i had ones that were just you know, daylight, literally is all I need. And then I can use the other one, but like I barely use my aperture 120, you know, going into a lot of offices. Yeah, you'd, rec that. Yeah, you'd recommend that over like a chip LED, right? Like the, the panels yeah, just for running gun. 
it's it's easy it's easy to move if they fucking break i'm not gonna die you know what i mean um but i've been using that on like i used to have something for a pretty big company i used just two of those lights and then i had i think i have the same i mean i might have the same rgb uh, light that you have but like it's important but not to the fact like you don't need to go out there and buy an aperture like 120 or like you don't need a nova type stuff like yeah those come useful when you're doing bigger production stuff but i think for the most part i think it, it all needs to be relevant to how much money you plan on charging these clients right most of your projects are going to start out i don't know how much you're charging but you know i'm just assuming if i was starting out i'm charging between 750 to two thousand dollars I'm not gonna buy a two thousand dollar light. It just doesn't yeah, yeah. Sense for me, right? There's some nice ones out there, but I'm not buying them right now, especially with yeah. like four kids and moving. And yeah, dude, like you know these Bobby Tag panels, dude. They they go a long way, and it's more to me. It's more important learning how to light because like I've seen plenty of people that have lights and and, and don't no idea what they're doing. Now. I recently invested in doing another like lighting course and stuff like that. So I think that's important. So I think lighting is great. And then audio, like audio is another huge thing for uh, these corporate stuff uh, because it's been- I have a shotgun mic. Okay. Uh, but it's not very good. I really like that uh, that Rode NTG shotgun that they have now that you can also use as a boom mic. Yeah. That's beautiful sound in that. So I've been thinking about that one. So I'll do, you definitely want a good shotgun mic. So what I, what I use right now, I'm gonna grab it real quick. And I have a lav mic too, a wired lav mic. It's got like a 20 foot long cord. But I don't have a wireless system, but I mean, that's good enough to start, so. I mean, there's some other stuff out in the market right now but i am obsessed with these road go mics these wireless yeah, yeah i was looking at those Dude. so the ntg paired with that as a backup i think would just be killer so this is what i use for a lot of the run and gun stuff i love this and then my shot well not shotgun mic but my boom mic i have this audio technica i think it's like 160 bucks i have this usually on a boom pole hooked up to my h4 I don't necessarily think a lot of people need this. If you get that uh, road mic that you're talking about, uh, my biggest thing when you're doing these corporate things, have backup audio. Like such a huge, so important thing, dude. Like it's, you know, going to a restaurant and you fuck up audio, like it's cool, whatever, like you can fix it. But when you shoot an interview for a company and you're sitting down with the CEO and somehow the audio got clipped or something like that and you don't have a backup. Can we do it again? <laughs> yeah, can we shoot this again? They're like, no, dude, I got a fucking company to run. Like, I don't got time for yeah. that. So, Kick rocks, yeah. Yeah. So, like, you know, I think that's the, the biggest thing for people. Um, you know, but it looks like you're, you're on your way. As for, um, yeah, so equipment-wise, I mean, I'm close. Uh, the only thing I have to edit on right now, I've got a... I've got a 2018 MacBook Pro 13 inch, but it's only got eight gigs of RAM. Mm -hmm. I don't have Final Cut Pro. I've only been using um, iMovie for practice. Okay. I mean, for corporate stuff, I can't imagine needing a bunch of effects, but still, I, I want Final Cut Pro. I don't think this is powerful or powerful enough for um, uh, DaVinci, even though I've downloaded it. I haven't tried yeah. it yet. Do you shoot Neslog? No. <laughs> I shoot, um, it's some, I shoot standard it's like or or no, I found, so a lot of the stuff we've been getting lately is for other agencies that are out of state or something like that, that we need to shoot for them. And a lot of them shooting like Ursa's and stuff like that. So I found a color profile for the Sony. That's like the closest thing that I can get to the Ursa to match this guy's footage. And I use it for one shoot. And I loved it. Like it's Tell just the not, Ursa. Or it's the closest to the Airy. I don't know. You want the Phantom Lutz? I don't know if it's a Phantom Lutz. I mean, I can play right now and tell you what it is. Cause that's what I bought. That's the reason I'm asking. But they're only made for S Log. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't buy anything. I literally was in a forum talking to some people, and they were like, "Oh, they were like, here's some test footage." I was like, "All right, let me check that out." So I'm PP. It's I'm shooting Cine Four with like some things done to it. So it's like black level two, gamma Cine Four, 
color mode pro saturation minus five but it's just enough for me that like the footage doesn't look horrible yeah um and like i just got to do some light color minimal post yeah like I don't want to, I don't not want to color grade footage, like not my thing, like the whole like trying to get a, like I've never used LUTs in any thing I've, I've ever done. It's just like, I want to shoot, I want to get done, I want to get paid. Like, yeah, I mean, that's where I'm at. Like, I don't want to spend the extra, like I get it, you can shoot log and get these different beautiful highlights and all, but like my clients just don't care. I just haven't, right. like for me, I was lucky that I actually start shooting on this freaking thing here this log it's a nikon d7100 i still use it for a shoot one of my clients i do car photos for him on this camera but like my first two years of business this is all that i was i was shooting for all my corporate stuff this i had two of these cameras two i had the sigma 17 to 50 2.8 this is the only thing that i had and none of my clients knew and i started shooting with people that were shooting with the a7 III and stuff like that and they're like Yo, you're booking gigs with like a fucking Nikon like crop sensor. I was like, yeah. I was like, my clients don't know. Like they're gonna watch the video on Facebook or Instagram. Like they can't tell the difference. So I never got caught up in all of that stuff. And I know, you know, I actually just bought the freaking literally in a box right there. It's the the Sony A7 III. I bought it. It's been here for like four days, and I still haven't like. (laughs) I want it so bad. I wanted, I wanted it too, but like, I, it's just in the box. It's just, it's one of those things I've, you know, kind of, I like, when it comes down to it, I care about, what about the, the uh, Sorry to interrupt you, but the yeah. Canon C70, you see that announcement? I saw that too. It looks cool. That looks perfect. Yeah. Um, I heard about the, they're coming out with like an FX6. So I don't know. Yeah. I honestly, mine, uh, I'm very happy with this, my small setup and I haven't gotten any jobs yet that required me to get a cinema level camera. And at this point, I'd rather rent something out or hire somebody. I'm really big right now on hiring other people to do my shoots and directing stuff. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I want to get in, I want to get out. I don't want to deal with a lot of the, the production side, at least certain perspectives of the production side. I enjoy more directing and giving creative direction than having to do, you know, all the shooting, setting up the lights, all of that. I want to talk to a client. I want to make sure they're happy. Like, that's 100%. Right. So, yeah. Um, so before you're talking about moving to Vancouver, trying to get yourself started there. I mean, I think the first thing you need to figure out is, um, do you have a portfolio? Any type of portfolio? I wouldn't call it a portfolio. Like I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Like I've fucked around. I made some videos for my wife. I put them on Instagram. I don't know if you watch them or whatever, but they're, they're nothing special. Okay. Uh, so I do have to create one with an interview style. Yep. Uh, I just practice with one on with my daughters just for the lighting. Mm-hmm. Uh, just reading like a thank you letter to their mom. Yeah. So that was like my interview, my first interview with lighting shoot. Yeah. So I was just messing around with that, but no, I don't, I wouldn't call any of it a portfolio. I mean, bro, if I was you in your situation right now, I would spend the next three, six months. And I don't know how things are in Canada with this whole COVID thing, but like, I'd reach out to businesses in your area and you know if you see my other videos just be like hey um my name is jay uh i make videos for businesses or like i got into video production i'm looking to build a portfolio uh, i'd love to shoot a free business video for your practice or whatever it is that you're trying to yeah like if i can make a couple bucks to that great but i really don't care about the money in the beginning my wife yeah, finds that crazy about money, bro. it's don't not about, about money. It's about making a great portfolio to use as a sales technique. That's what exactly. And the video doesn't need to be great either. Right. So like, if you look at my first dentist video, like the lighting on it was really bad. I had like, they like, cause I didn't have time. Right. Like I didn't understand how busy the guy was going to be throughout the shoot. So when I got set up there, like, what was the name of that one? It's, uh, it's you type in Lake Worth Dentist on YouTube. It's going to, I think that's the one I watched. You talked about it in one of your previous videos. Yeah. I've seen that. So, you know, there's like light, there's like bags under his eyes from the lighting, just little stuff that I didn't know, but um, it doesn't need to be perfect. But that video there was good enough because like those are things that a lot of people won't notice that they're not in the business. So you just like the biggest thing that you're doing right now is by shooting a video, you're easing your potential next client's mind on knowing that you know what you to do, what you're doing. Because the biggest thing is, even for me, like as you grow your business is that, you're taking risk, right? I'm taking a risk on 
coming on to talk to you here where I could be doing something in my business. So by eliminating, like you taking the initiative to like comment on my shit, to, to engage with me, that shows like, hey, this guy actually wants to learn from me. You're worth taking that time. You took the initiative to do that. You're doing the exact same thing for another business owner. By right? going out, mm -hmm. shooting a video to somebody else, you're able to show them that you're able to do this job. You're, you're able to use your mind. Now, you do three videos, even one, whatever the situation it might be, then you start hitting up these businesses that, that you're gonna be moving to in you know, six months from now to Vancouver. Hey, you know, my name's Jay. I've worked with a couple local businesses here in Vancouver Island. We had some great success with these videos. Um, you know, I'll love to find out what are your video production needs in the coming future. I'm going to be you know, moving there in the six months. I'll love to be able to create a relationship with you. Start hitting up a bunch of people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Start planning that out. But I think building that portfolio for is going to be like the first thing that I would start working on. Okay. So that sort of leads into the main question I had about portfolio is I don't know who I'm going after in Vancouver, but it's sort of like the list I told you, the more big mm -hmm. ticket that can afford video one video. Am I just, I don't have to stick to one niche. I keep hearing stick to one niche in the beginning. As a photographer, I did weddings, real estate, uh, and portraits. Mm -hmm. And I got it all through doing free jobs in the beginning. And then that got led to another job and another job, which started paying and paid for my equipment, which I then sold to buy the Sony for this video or for the video that I want to do. Um, okay. So I know, and I've been in car sales for five, six years okay. and I was pretty good. I just hated it after a while and got out. Yeah. So I run a cleaning business with my wife now and I work nights. Okay. So that gives me all day long to work on video. So, I mean, so my timing could be better. Wife's business. What's that? Have you shot a video for your wife's business? No, because we're getting out of that. She wants out of it basically. Uh -huh. And I'm just sort of running it and doing it. So the people like we clean a couple of a, like a small local college as well as car dealership, stuff like uh -huh. that. Uh, I did a photo shoot for him for the owner of the car dealership before. So I may try to do a video. Same with the, uh, Dude, the finance manager. Right there. I'll, I want to do one for him as well. Do go to the dealership. Like you're, what are you, that's where, like, that's where you leverage that. And that's where we got lucky with a lot of the clients that we do. So like when I got started and, I'm, and that's, I actually had another, one of my best calls that I've ever had with somebody, the audio didn't work. And I was very upset about that. But um, here's the thing. If you're just starting out, you're not gonna go out there and you're gonna be able to shoot an interview video that's gonna be awesome. There's a lot of different steps and layers. So I think the first thing that you need to do is just shoot a video. Like you need to work with a business owner first, create a video, no audio. I think the first video that I did was for like a proper business video was for a restaurant that I was working at. I shot like a 30 second or a one minute video for them. No audio, just B-roll stuff. That gave me the experience of working with the business owner. The next video I did, it had a little bit of audio. The audio was super bad. I was using like shotgun mic from like six feet away. Like On camera. Away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't know, right? And eventually as it started to progress, that gets better. So I think, you know, I, I talk in a lot of my videos about like, hey, do these business videos. But if you've never shot a video for a business owner that included audio, it can get stressful, man. Like, you know, even it, it's one more layer of things that can go wrong. So what I recommend is like, I bring, so like I got lucky that I found friends in my community that I was able to go out and shoot with and help them on their shoots. They helped me on my shoots. We figure out how to work and mesh together. So like, I'm like, Hey, I'm going to let you run the camera. I'm going to set up audio and I'm going to interview the client for these things. And then when you have a shoot, I'm going to do the exact same thing for you. Is that cool? Perfect. When you try to do everything by yourself, it's hard. Right. More shit goes wrong. So I think like, and then, so I'm going to be all over the place, but the fact that you shot photos for a dealership, I would go and shoot a video for him because you already have a working relationship with him. But now you just created yourself a media package for yeah. another business, right? And that's something that we started doing because like we do a little bit, like when I got started, I, dude, I was doing anything and everything I could to get clients. So like, you know, when I moved here from New York, I didn't have any money. I was sleeping on my mom's couch, 30 years old, like 
I like anything I could do to try to get a job I was doing, I was like doing photography for restaurants at night for like 125 bucks. Just like four nights a week was Saturday. So Friday, Saturday, Sundays, I'd go out to this, like they own a strip of restaurants. And I'm literally talking around like, Hey, you want a free photo? You want a free photo? Like for their social media, but I was doing whatever I could just to stay afloat. So, you know, with that, I didn't have money to market my business yet. So I learned about SEO. I wanted a website, but I couldn't afford a website. So I learned how to use Squarespace. And then all those things that I learned from my own business, I realized that those are all tools for other businesses. So then what I started doing, when I did, when I was out shooting a photo or a video for a client, I would snap photos that I know they could use for their Google My Business. Like Google My Business is huge. You talk to any business owner, they know about Google My Business, right? So like, I'm already going in there. No, not all of them. It's insane. Some of them don't, but this is where you become an expert, right? Yeah. So like, hey, you shot the video. Oh, let me snap a couple photos for you. You got a couple photos. Bam. Hey, thanks so much for working for you. Here's a video. By the way, I, I made some photos. I shot some photos for you. You can upload these to your Google My Business. These really help with the ranking and all that, yada, yada, yada. Perfect. You just created yourself another package, right? So you can go in and tell business owner, hey, I'm doing a special right now. 1500 bucks, you get a 45 second business video and we're throwing in 10 free images for your Google My Business listing. Sounds like a pretty good deal, you know what I mean? But you need to be able to show them that you've done that. So the fact that you already worked with that dealership and like, I don't know what you're charging and stuff like that, you know, so whatever you feel comfortable telling me or not telling me. I was for just like, what, hey, for which? For anything, like for videos and photos, but like I would go out and start pitching. My bread and butter for photos was actually real estate. Really? I hate real estate. I don't hate it. But what I do hate is how there is no referrals in the real estate game because they don't want you photographing for what you, and you don't. Okay. So for anybody listening, the best way, not only in, but to make money in the real estate photo game and maybe video is go to builders don't go to realtors, go to builders. Cause they're constant repeat business that actually have the money mm -hmm. and they use it to promote an architecture and things yeah. like that. So here's a quick, funny story for you. I did a shoot for a builder. I just kept approaching him until finally he's like, okay, like, fuck, like, you're off <laughs> <her> back. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so he said, well, I'd like to see what you can do and this and that. I don't know what you charge. And I didn't know what I was charging because I was just starting out, but I knew I wanted uh, like a builder. Yeah. So I said, tell you what, like I'll do the first shoot for free. If you like it, um, I don't need you to pay me because I needed lenses at the time. Mm -hmm. And I said, just cover the cost of this lens. And once I buy that lens, we'll talk pricing. And he's like, all right. And so he texts me back and says, actually, how much is the lens you want? And I was like, ah, oh, it's like 1500 bucks. It's whatever. And he's like, okay, so can I just buy it for you now? And then you can just work off the, I was like, okay. So then he asked me to do a portrait shoot with his new girlfriend and, uh, and his sons. So I do the portrait shoot and I start talking to him about his website. Cause before I went there, I researched the shit out of his website and his history and what his company does. So I wanted no dead space with him. Right? Yeah. I wanted to talk and sort of sell what I can do for him. By the end of this 20 minute conversation, he says, would you be interested if I hired you to run my website as well? And I also just bought a Marina. Could you maybe photograph that and work the website for that? Here's where inexperience comes in. I choked hard because I could easily do this. I've run Shopify stores. I've done Facebook marketing, mm. I've built my own websites. I've sorry. been self-taught. That's my wife. Sorry. Hey. Get out of here. <laughs> so, uh, so I say to him, you know, I could, but to be honest with you, I don't want to waste your money. There's professionals that do this. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to help or give you advice on it, but I don't think I'm the guy to do that for you. I said that out loud. Dude, I oh. do that now. I, I, I get it. And you know, it's, it's one of those things of, I was just trying to be honest and I ended oh, up, but I mean, then you did the right thing because, you know, in, in yeah, that, but if you look at his website still to this day, it's yeah. horrendous. So anyway, well, I mean, at, at that point, it's like, you know, all depends on how much you're trying. It's here's the thing. It's hard for you 
to do all those things for him when you're not charging enough money, right? When I first got started, so the yeah. kind of like same situation that that company of restaurant, that restaurant group I was working for, I got my foot in the door of learning Facebook ads because I they they started doing these events called Friday Night Sound Waves. And at that point, I was like learning about Facebook ads because I wanted to my business. So I was like, hey, I'm learning how to do Facebook ads. Can I run Facebook ads for you? You know, 300 bucks per month. And they're like, yeah, we could do that. Dude, I'll never do social media or anything for anybody for $300 a month anymore. It's hard right. to work. Yeah, but at that point, that. I was broke. So 300 a month sounded, sounded like a, a lot, right? But it's one of those things, like if you're not charging enough money, it doesn't matter all the different things that your client needs help with. They're not going to pay you properly to do it. You're going to get fucking burned out and done with it. Now, for me now, like, I've been having not even an issue, but like, all the wedding inquiries, because I have Tasca Studios and I have Tasca Weddings. And then- But you like, still have weddings. I do, but I don't. So like, I've been okay. getting wedding inquiries. I give them out to other pe- other videographers in my area. I'm like, yo, Eric, I got two wedding leads. Like, call these ladies. Like, I'm not hitting them back up. Like, I, I don't want it. So the same thing. I have another client that we did a, um, she's like the marketing director for the companies that we worked with. And she's like, hey, Rodrigo, this weekend, um, uh, my boyfriend proposed to me. I'm getting engaged to do weddings. I was like, no. I was like, I don't do weddings. Um, you know, yeah. you can, like, I don't do weddings anymore. If you want to contact my buddy Eric, he can help you. But it's like the more you start saying no to things, the more, yes, situations that happen for you. Um, because now you're not the guy that does everything, but when you're starting out, you have to be that person, right? You have to get the expertise and working in a bunch of different fields and understand what you like and what you don't like doing. I kind of I figured that in the beginning, down. you know, like weddings were fun, they were, they were fun, but I know that in the long run of things, it's not what I want to do. So I start moving away from that. But when you're building your business, your career, like I took on a lot of shitty jobs in the beginning, but like, I needed the money yeah so yeah and if i'm hoping to like feed my family doing this that's why like a guy like you to be able to just sort of pick your brain and say like hey put, put yourself in my shoes what would you do mm-hmm. uh, i obviously knew you were going to say portfolio so i definitely gotta get on that um another question whenever you want to answer it is, yeah. is things like contracts um paying half up front deposits things like that and follow up with your clients and um so let's deliver- start one at a time yeah i know um, and just i'm just giving you a list sorry yeah well yes yeah, so let's that's, that's so the first thing you said is contract oh, and this and this and that <laughs> yeah so i learned this from crystal if you guys don't know crystal go follow him in the future dude literally i i subscribe to that just because you said to yeah dude chris chris is freaking awesome so first thing is contracts other things that follow up and you have one more uh, so contracts, follow up, file delivery. File delivery. And I don't know if you count contracts as like uh, payment deposits and. Okay, cool. I'll put those together. Things like that. Um. All right. So contracts. It's huge. I I lost five G's like my first year of business here, and I'm gonna say like I lost five G's. Like I lost five G's. Like I went to court, won the court case, all of that. Lady didn't show up for court. I had to file a lien against her. Never got my five thousand dollars. And that's gonna end up costing you a shitload too, just trying to get all that done. Right? Especially yeah. when I was broke, freaking, you know, stay at my mom's house. Like that was a big hit. Like paying out people, thinking that I was getting money that I wasn't gonna get. Like that shit hurt. So mm-hmm. contracts are huge. Um, you know, and there's different things. Like I have certain clients now that I work with. They're like, hey, I need this type of video. There's a working relationship. You know, what I mean, certain things slide. But when you're starting out. Contracts are gonna save you. They're gonna let you know the client know that you're also serious about your business. Uh, for deposits, uh, we do. So like right now, for doing you know working together, we came to an agreement. I'd be like, I'll shoot you an email like, hey Jay, based on what we just talked about, your video is gonna be two thousand uh, dollars for a thirty second TV spot. You'd be like, great. I'm like okay, cool. Send it over a proposal shortly. Uh, my proposal and agreements one form. I want to keep my client's mail inbox or mailbox slim as possible. I don't want to send them five emails to close a deal. I try to put everything in one email. 
So that email will be have, you know, hey Jay, thanks so much for the opportunity. Linked below is gonna be a link to the goal signer document for the agreement and proposal. And below that, it's gonna be a link to QuickBooks for you to pay 50% deposit. As soon as the agreement signed and deposits pay, we'll send you a confirmation email uh, for your booking. We'll also attach PDF copies of the agreement and the PDF in the email below. Let me know if you have any questions. Do you, I didn't want to interrupt. Do you yeah. offer anything like that? Like to, I don't know if you sell anything online or not yet. I have yeah. no idea. I've worked I have, for. I have, I have, I have, my contracts are actually pretty cheap. All the, the same you contract. You sell them. I sell them 24 bucks. Well, okay. I'll, you don't even have to sell me online. I'll buy them. Like that's 25 good. bucks. You can yeah. get my, I'm actually going to raise the price on them, but for $25 <laughs> right now, like it's all the contracts I use in my business are for sale. Uh, in the link below guys that right so, there is probably more valuable to anyone watching your channel than anything dude it's it's crazy i mean but what like camera I said, do you use? Of, that's, what yeah. instead of like what camera do you use and then that's like yeah, yeah. um so that's to do the contracts and then i use software like go signer to make it easier to sign um have you done I'm, a video on all this there's some stuff it's like there's i have I might have one video on there. So I actually do have a contracts video on my page. I think it has like a pink thumbnail on it. Um, I thought I watched all of them. I, may, I might have just forgot about it. For the deposit, I do anything less than $1,000. It's 100% due in signing. Okay. I don't want to, because like before we're doing like, I was doing a $500 video and then I'd be like, hey, you made a deposit for 250 and then give me another deposit for you know 125 and then give me one I'm like it's 500 bucks if you can't fucking pay me 500 dollars up front like we should not be doing business together so anything less than a thousand dollars it's up front fifteen hundred dollars or like let's just call it two grand so two grand project a thousand dollars due signing the project fifty percent is due the day after the shoot and then the remaining 50% or I guess the remaining 25% is due before I deliver the footage. You start the shoot before any deposit? No, I get a 50, well, I get the 50% deposit up front. Oh, like 30 days before, or I guess that was well, like, so like, days. so like when you sign it, so like if you want to shoot, like I have a shoot Wednesday, the guy paid it, he paid, I'm doing a shoot for like 600 bucks. I actually got to drop a video on that of like, I actually did a call with the client. I recorded that call. So if you guys don't watch that, it'll probably be linked here at one so point. So basically, when you close the deal, you get the deposit. Yeah, close the deal. He paid, but he paid all up front because it's six hundred bucks. Um, so let's say it's two thousand, and be like, hey, here's agreement. Here's an invoice for a thousand dollars. Pays the invoice, signs the agreement. I send him a Google confirmation with the shoot location, the day, my email, contact information, all the stuff that he needs. The day after, so when we wrap the shoot, when the shoot finishes, my sister emailed them, that's a wrap email, which is pretty much, hey, that's a wrap. We just finished the shoot. Our crew is backing up your footage, yada, yada, yada. Here's a link for the remaining 25% of the invoice. We edit the video, revisions, yada, yada, yada. And then I use Dropbox Business which allows me to disable the download feature on Dropbox. So I send them a video, they're like, hey, video is great, I can't download it, no problem, here's remaining invoice, as soon as the remaining 25% is paid, the link will be available for you to download. Have you ever used Vimeo or anything like that with clients? Oh, um, like no. feedback on a video or no? No, I haven't. So you could use Vimeo Dropbox, Dropbox business plan offers that for me. I hate Dropbox so much. Yeah. Why do you hate it? I'll just have, I just don't like the layout. I don't like how it works. I don't like what you have to pay for it. So I thought about, I was doing that with photos with real estate and the builders and everything. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Oh, just uh, use Dropbox. And so I would use what uh, wedding photographers use like pick time or this yeah. and that. And you can literally customize it and it just looks so much more professional. I thought it for yeah, photos. Uh -huh. And then for video, there's some other wedding thing I just found where I was like, this is amazing for a business owner to deliver a file. Really? I just, okay. uh, let me see if I can find what it's called. 
dude, I'm all, I'm always willing to improve my business. You know what I mean? Like I am like, if I hear something new like that, like I'm going to check it out. But, um, you know, that's, I just always use Dropbox Web. because it also was web allows, flow. What is it? Wed flow. Wed so flow? Wed like wedding and flow yeah, is so. just F L O I think. Okay. Now I don't know a lot about it. I just happened to see it, checked it out for a few minutes and thought I bookmarked it to check it out later. Come here. Hi buddy. Come here. So, uh, yeah, it's, I just did not like Dropbox. I just find very clunky. Yeah. But it doesn't mean I won't use it. If that's what you're using. And yeah, you're I mean, it's, I'm using it because I, I store everything else on there. Right. Cause like now I have, um, stuff with like clients that I need to send them like 20 files. I want to be able to create a folder for them that I'm able to share with them. I'm also able to share with my team. It makes it super easy. Right. So like I'm about making my client's life easier. Um, so that's what I use for that. Okay. Um, are we good here? You want to go to the next question? Any, you name it, man. I just, this is great. No, my wife hates what do you want that to I talk know, about right? this. <laughs> um, so your next question is follow-up. What exactly about follow-up did you want to know? Okay. So in the car business, for instance, that was huge, right? Whether you're looking for a client, um, communicating with a client that's sort of like a warm client or follow-up with previous sales. Yeah. I never hear anybody talk about this on when it comes to the business side for video or photo. Yeah. Uh, so I was curious, do you have like a, an automated email thing that handles that for you? Or do you write down a schedule of phone call with previous current and potential clients or yeah, so, workflow basically? Yeah. So there, I had, so my workflow for that, I use Trello. Okay. Uh, and Trello is a free software that all of you guys can use. And I pretty much have like prospects, uh, onboarding, pre-production, shooting, like pretty much I have like our eight steps of business that we do. So normally what I do is as I'm working throughout, like I should be, this should be automated. So I don't have an automated system. I sort of have something that I have steps for these systems, they're not just automated. So as I'm working through projects, I'll start seeing that as soon as like one side of my Trello gets, you know, looks a little bit skinnier than the other, I'll start following up with clients and things like that. Cause that's the other thing too, for the most part, I'm a one, one man band other than my sister helping me with stuff. Um, so like, I don't want to have like, like right now I have like three projects due and I'm leaving in freaking two days. So like, that puts me in like a rut of things. So I try to manage those things. I know that I could be doing a better job at it, but just with like my current situation, it doesn't make sense for me. So I do keep track of the prospects and I use Trello cause you could put a lot of notes and stuff on there. Um, but when we do have a client in our funnel or our system, typically we do like our intro email, which is kind of similar to what I told you that'd be like, Hey, Dr. John, my name is Rodrigo. I work at Tesco Studios. Um, you know, we've had some huge success with some of our clients in your local area. And just wanted to reach out, find out if you have any interest in video production. Let me know if this makes sense for us to chat. If I don't hear from him, like two days, I'll call the office. Hey, trying to talk to Dr. John. You know, what is this about? Oh, the email I was expecting my call. Gatekeeper, yeah. Don't hear from him again, I'll shoot another email. Um, trying to touch base, haven't got a hold of you. Just want to see if you're interested. Just let me know, and then from there I'll call one more time if I can get a hold of him. Then I'll send like a breakup email. Just be like, "Hey, try to get a hold of you. If it doesn't make sense now, totally understand. Here's my contact information." And that's kind of the process that I go through. Um, I think you kind of spoke on that on one of your more recent videos. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's 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 the same stuff, man. It's just getting out there and and doing it right. But then also like. What makes it easier sometimes is being proactive of like, you know, if I am driving down the street and I'll see like a truck that has like freaking like the side of the truck has a bunch of advertisement and stuff on it, like from a company that's like wrapped their truck, I'm taking a photo of that truck and I'm sending them an email when, gotcha. you know, yeah. like I'll be like, yo, babe, can you get a photo of that car for me real quick? Yeah. Um, so I can follow up with them. Look at the people that are, that appreciate marketing. Like, you know, when I see billboards on the side of the freaking highway, take a photo of that. There's the bill. They're spending money on billboards. Like they're spending, they got money to spend. You know what I mean? Like yeah. billboards are not cheap. 
at and they all. put it on the back of buses and yeah. they like to put on bus stops. It's like, what are you like? It's 2020. What are you doing? Perfect, so that's what bro. You're, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, so reaching out to so being proactive to them, and, and, and it's it's a long term thing too. Like, you know, when I first got started out, I was very like hungry and eager, but you know, there's a big gap that you go through of like, you know, the really cheap jobs are the ones that you work with the most pain in the ass people. Hundred percent. And the bigger jobs take freaking forever to get done, but they're usually a lot easier. But that sales process is a lot longer. The thing is, when you get these bigger jobs, you cannot act the same way that you do here because they're gonna they're like, why is this guy freaking desperate right now to get this work? Something's wrong. Yeah. Right? You yeah. have to play it at their own pace. Like we have one video right now that we're like literally four weeks in. I've sent this contract in twice for them for revisions. It's a ten thousand dollar project for like one like thirty second video that like I'm just editing, bro. You know what I mean? But it's like, they're like, I'm not hitting them up. It's kind of like, you know, whenever you guys need me, I'm here. I want to be the guy that when you guys need shit done, I'm going to get it done for you. They're like, all right, cool. So like, you know, I'm just waiting for that. But if I'm hitting her up, hey, you know, I just want to see how the project's going. I haven't heard from you. She's like, you know, like, yo, what the fuck? Like, why are you like, you know? So just always keep that in mind. It's just like when you are going after these bigger clients, you know, be at a slower pace. Um, Like, you know, but now, this other project that I'm doing Wednesday for 600 bucks, the guy was like, I really want to drop the, I'm going to probably drop the video tonight. Um, but you know, he was like, I sent him $900 was for a half day rate. And he's like, Oh, like, I didn't want to spend that much money. And I was like, all right, how much do you want to spend? And he's like, well, how much can you do for me? I'm like, listen, I don't want to play that game. I'm ready to come in now for 900 bucks. But I do need this, 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 yeah. this, this, this. this. Yeah. So like, what is it that you want to do? Because I can make it happen, but like, I'm not going to tell you more. Like, he's like, well, I was thinking like 500 bucks. Like, listen, I could do like a one hour shoot and make a 15 second video for you for $600. And he's like, all right, I could do that. I'm like, all right, cool. You know what I mean? So for me going on a trip in four days, I'll take the extra, like for me to go out for yeah. an hour to go shoot something put together a 15 second banner video for a lawyer's website. It's no brainer, right? I'm going to be more aggressive on that project. So it's just being able to, you know, you got to play that field with your clients and figure out which one is that, which ones you got to be more aggressive with and which ones you got to be more relaxed. But whatever it is, the bigger the client, the longer the sales period. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's not the exact same, but the, the car business again, just cause it's what I know when it comes to sales. Yeah the less money like it's completely the opposite of what you think when you get into sales the people who have less money that you think you're helping are the most impossible people people to deal with and small business owners are so hard to deal with but when people that you thought were going to be the biggest snobs and like we're looking at hundred thousand dollar or eighty thousand dollar cars and we're dressed to the nines and they were in a hurry you know what i mean yeah. Just, yeah, 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 whatever. Like, where do I sign? Like, I just want to get this done. Here's my money. Exactly. It's like, what? So basically, you just had to get out of your own way. Well, they're paying for that peace of mind, right? Well, they know the value of what their money does, and it buys them time as well, like convenience. And so I would assume it's similar in the video world. I mean, that's the thing, too. When you're, when like, so this client, they were charging like 10 Gs for the project. They're paying for reinsurance. Like when I do work with these clients, it's like, hey, we have a 48 hour deadline on this. And we, we need to do it, it right. Hours, like, mm-hmm. No problem. 48 hours, done. I give it to you in 36. Like, you know what I mean? They're paying for the actual reinsurance. Because I've done other projects, I've done way more for way more clients. It took a lot longer and I made way less money. Um, but it, like, you know what I mean? Like they're paying for the extra thing, but it all depends on your client. Um we talked about file delivery as well. So, what about the like payment methods? Do you carry Square with you or anything? So, in case you're mid conversation, you can close a deal right there and get money. Right it's there, QuickBooks, or? QuickBooks app. I can literally pull up my, phone, that. my phone right now. I could pull up QuickBooks and be like, Oh, you need an invoice? I'd be like, Done. You know, I'll, I'll send it to your email. You have a credit card? Perfect. And then there are situations where it'd be like, Okay, PayPal me or, or Vamo me. Um, which doesn't happen a lot, you know, for a lot of the businesses that we're working with now, they have controllers within like their department. So like, yeah. I got to send an invoice, got to do all these different things. 
but you know, I go on QuickBooks. And that's the other thing too. I think that's another big thing that um, I didn't start using it till it's so like my first year business, I think we did like $23,000. Yeah. Second year business was like 47,000. And then that was the second year that I got QuickBooks self-employed, which was like $7 a month or something like that. I think they bumped up the price like 15 bucks now. Um, but I was able to do all my invoices there. I was able to keep a track of the people that I was paying for like PAs and stuff, helping them shoot. I also did mileage tracking on my car and then it deducted all of that for me. So the end of the year, when it also like gave me quarterly estimates of like, Hey, you're making this much money. You're going to have to pay like 750 bucks this quarter on taxes. So it kind of, it kind of helped me have a sense of what's happening in my business. Yeah. Um, so I think that was super important, but the fact that it was like everything, it's like, yes, it's $15 a month, but here's the thing. It's a business expense. You read off the end of the year, right? So like versus, and the other thing I liked about it versus getting paid through PayPal is that like, if you pay me to PayPal, PayPal is going to take its cut oh, yeah. and then PayPal is going to pay you QuickBooks. QuickBooks will give you all your money. They take their cut after. So what, what happens? Another, okay. business, another business expense right off because now they're taking that money from there. So the, like the, the whole process just made my life a lot easier at the end of the year. And so we did that for about two years, but then as the business grew and I got closer to that hundred thousand dollar mark, my accountant is like, Hey, listen, your self-employed thing was great, but now you have your sister on payroll. You're working with more contractors. Your self-employed thing is not gonna like. That was my next off. question for you. Yeah. So now are you there, sort of thing or. Yeah. What was that? Like sole proprietor in the beginning and so I'm, a, I'm still, I'm still an or? LLC. I'm still an LLC for my business. Um, we talked about last year from going S corp or something like that. Um, but I think that's one of those things that for most people who started now, like I didn't, I didn't go, I didn't get an LLC. It's like the end of my first year of business, and that's because I did photos for. I was working with this rehab company or whatever I call them agency that they like bought houses and made them to like halfway houses and shit like mm -hmm. that. So I did like a project for them and they wrote me a check for like $3,700 and I tried to pause in it and tell my personal bank account in the bank. I was like, nah, this is task studios on it, on the check. And this is like a business thing and trying to deposit $3,700 to your business or your account. Like, well, you didn't open a separate happen. account. What? You didn't have a separate account. At that time, no, dude. I was like running fucking lean. I didn't have insurance. I didn't have any of those things. Uh, so when they're like, they're like, hey, if you're going to cash this check, we need an LLC or some type of thing. So that's when I went, got to like, you know, did the IRS freaking EIN number, got a bank account, did all those things. And then like end of the year, I got insurance. But I think it's like a, all a step, right? Like for me to make $23,000 a year to then file an LLC, because like, there's a certain level of that spectrum that you don't need to, you know, have an LLC. And I'm not a lawyer, guys. Right. I was watching this. I'm just like, yeah. you know, my personal experience. Um, you know, there's a lot of that stuff that when I was making $200, $500, $1,000 videos, people were paying me through Venmo or PayPal. It, it slides, you know what I mean? Now you start getting checks and stuff. It's a different story. So I think it's like, you know, if I was just starting out today, I'm not tomorrow morning. I'm not doing an LLC. Like if I'm not making money yet, like I'm not doing an yeah. LLC. There's a, you can still file whatever ways, you know, talk to your account guys. But that was kind what of about, like it for me. What about like the, the name of your business? Did you, when you started, did you just name it? Like, is your full, I don't know your actual name. If it's just Rodrigo Tasca. It's Rodrigo Tasca. That is your actual name. Yeah. I didn't know so, if Tasca meant something or something else, but. No, did you not. just name it that and that was it? Or did you actually start with a business name that you could either sell later or sound more professional? Or What's your advice there? Advice there is don't use your name. Um, don't I use originally me. started with Rodrigo Tasca Productions. Right. 
that's what I was living in New York. And when I that's moved, more like wedding film kind of name right there. Right? It is, but like in New York City, a lot of people do that because like in New York at that time, which is like 2015, early 2016, like in New York as a videographer, you do everything. You're the shooter, editor, producer. Like, you know, at that time, like now when you tell people that, like, of course you shoot, edit, and produce. It's a given. Yeah. 2015, 2016, in Florida, I was reaching out to businesses, telling them like, hey, this is Rodrigo calling from Rodrigo Tasca Productions. And they were like, Rodrigo who? And that's how I kind of got my my Instagram was from that, was Rodrigo who? <laughs> what is it? Because people were like, Rodrigo who? I'm like, Rodrigo from Rodrigo Tasca Productions. I'm like, fuck, I sound so stupid telling people it's Rodrigo from Rodrigo Tasca Productions. So I was like, okay, let me do something else. So at that time, I was living at my mom's house and I was literally in a room smaller than this that I'm in now. So I was literally staying at my mom's house, either sleeping on the couch or I had an air mattress in my sister's room. And we were literally, I would go to bed, blow up the air mattress, wake up, turn off the air mattress, roll it up, sit on the computer in the same table, like same room. My sister would work in another corner of the room and it was kind of a studio, right? So then we're like, okay, so that's where, like, the whole Tasca Studios, it wasn't so much of, like, you know, studio because it's, like, a studio of doing stuff. It was more because it was, like, this is, like, Tasca family, and we're, like, living in a fucking studio. And it just made sense that, you know, with production versus going, like, Tasca Productions, we're, like, no, let's go to studios. It has more to do with what we were about at that time and getting started. That, like, it just meant more to me. Um, now, you ever, were you ever considering SEO at that point in your video yeah. career? At that so, point, too. So, studios was something that when it came down to productions, and stu- but here's the other thing, too productions would have been better for me and it still okay. would be having that oh, word really? there. But looking at the overall branding, Tasca Studios, they flow way better together. Like if I was to put yeah. together, you know, it's equal. If I was to put task and then productions, this side was way heavier. It wasn't symmetrical. I think about that same shit. <laughs> it is, but it's important, yeah. man. You know what I mean? People look at it. So, but now if I was to do it over again, I would not use my last name. I would use something else. Um, like, what did you consider even like the city or state that you live in for SEO purposes and add that within the name? You could. I was actually trying to buy Palm Beach palm beach productions uh as a website from somebody they didn't want to sell it but i would it's going to help you um you know being found on google in your market so excuse me but no um i would consider that but i think just having another name that you know it's and it's hard too because there's so many names out there now that I like, you know, you hear of like different companies. So it's definitely getting more competitive. So if you're able to, you know, Vancouver production or Vancouver video, something like that, that it's very easy. Or even if you did like Vancouver video productions or it's like VVP. You know yeah, I was I mean? thinking of something exactly like that. That's just basic, boring, but easy to remember and easy to tell somebody what your website is. Yeah, yeah. But that's the other thing too. We have to be careful with, like one of our clients um, that does uh, the car company I was shoe with, their thing was called Southeast Auto Showrooms. So in his emails, when he's talking to clients, clients were like, bro, what the fuck? Like Southeast Auto, like it was such a long email. So we just bought- Hang on, I'm still typing in your email address. <laughs> exactly, so we just bought South, like we bought SE Autos or like Southeast Auto. Yeah. You gotta think about the end user, right? And it's the same thing. The longer your name is on your production, the more chances are someone's gonna misspell that name, type yeah. it in Google and get in it wrong. So it's something that you wanna consider. So like, you know, if you were to get, you know, Vancouver Video Productions, if you're able to buy, you know, freaking vvproduction.com or vvp.com exactly what i was thinking that makes sense um but you know but that was also part of the question is does the email name help or not the email name sorry the website name so instead of vv productions does the word vancouver help in videos in search when they're looking for vancouver video production companies Uh, i own about 10 different domain names 
Yeah, okay. And they, they do all, they all direct to the one site? They all re redirect. So I have like West Palm Beach Video Productions, Pompano Beach Video Productions, South Florida Video Productions, localbusinessvideos.com. Like I own a bunch of these different names of somebody wants to type them in on there. They're going to send them to my website. The same thing for my wedding one. So we have dot CA here, like in Canada, okay. whereas dot com is very well known. That's the more professional to use dot com. Yeah. But you wouldn't believe how many businesses own a dot com name, but they don't own the dot CA. Mm -hmm. Because you'll find people here that don't think you're a Canadian company if it doesn't end with dot CA. Mm -hmm. It blows my mind. So it's just a tip for anybody listening. I mean, in that situation, I'll find some big companies and buy those names and sit on them. <laughs> well, yeah. And I've sold a couple of domain names through that. You know what I mean? That I just put them, I bought like some like vegan, vegan names for different foods and stuff like that. And I bought them and I just relisted them on, on GoDaddy. So like dyingslowly.com or what would stuff like that, you know? I mean, I'm vegetarian. So like that's, but like I know, so like I have a friend of mine, shout out to you, Christian. He bought a bunch of TikTok name domain, like tiktokvideos.com. Like stuff them? like that. that. I'm just like, bro, fucking genius. So like, the same thing, COVID, like if you, when the COVID thing before it came, if you were smart enough to think about stuff like that, like what kind of like, think about it, covidtesting.com, how much would somebody yeah. fucking pay for a name right now, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and that's where like you as a business owner and entrepreneur start getting wiser to different things is, you know, when you start learning about the, and that's where I, like the last call I had with somebody is like, you also need to realize when you're starting out a video production company is you're about to embark and run in a business. So you need to figure out, is that what you want to do? Because like, this is a full-time job, right? It's freaking yeah. what 10 o'clock here. I'm having a, a call with you. Like I was just working before this. I was like eating, I was posting video. Like this is not, you know, I'm just going to shoot some videos today and this is going to be fun. Like, no, you need to go out. You need to find the lead. You need to close that lead. You need to go shoot that video. You got to deal with taxes. You got to do all these different things. So it's like, you have to be very aware of all these different things that happen, but throughout all those things, you as a person grow, you start learning more about different business things and then different opportunities that come within like your market. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Like that's, he, that's a no brainer for me. Like I know the work that's going to be involved. Like I come from jobs 90 hours a week where it sounds impossible, but you're looking at 12 to 17 hour days right there, yeah. seven days a week. And, but if it's something like, I have no doubt this is what I enjoy doing yeah. more than anything. So that part's Dude, you get sales me. background, bro. Like the biggest yeah. thing I struggled with is that, you know, English is not, up my, for me. is not my second language. English is my second language. And I go through a problem of like, I catch myself in videos a lot. I'm like, slow down. Cause You've said that before, but I would have never known that had you not said that. I talk too fast. I don't enunciate a lot of words sometimes. So like, you know, there are things, especially on the phone, like I'll catch myself like, oh, I did not pronounce that correctly. And like, I need to slow myself down. But like, man, if you, if I had like sales experience, I could just get on the phone and talk to somebody comfortably. Like it's sales. You could have sales is what would drive your business. It doesn't matter if you got a red camera or whatever. Yeah, like, if you don't got sales, like you don't got anything. I know a lot of amazing photographers that don't make a dollar that run circles around guys or women that make 200 grand a year doing photos for wedding photography, but they know the business side of it. That's what they concentrate on. They do the marketing, the business. It's crazy how much of a difference it makes. Yeah. Which is why what you're doing is important. So I appreciate it. Um, for sure. Yeah, man, I could, talk your ear off about this i know you got shit to do i gotta go clean toilets so i can make money to buy new gear hey man <laughs> part of the hustle yeah it's what you gotta do um so yeah man if we ever get in contact again that'd be awesome for sure bro let me know how it goes let me know when you get to vancouver you got my information hit me up um you know love to find out how the whole process everything's going for sure. Do you mind if I, if I ever have a question here and there, just throw it on like a DM or an IG and that's fine. Hit me up. Okay. Cool. Appreciate it, man. And then you're cool. If I post this video, I'm going to blur out oh, yeah, your, yeah. your daughter's face to just. That's okay. Uh, okay, bro. Appreciate you, man. Have a good one. You too. All right, bro. Cheers.